Hey everybody, Jason here at GDT Basics with the video question line. Today's topic is designing to an MMC and LMC. The question for today is submitted by the student is, is it possible or common for a feature of size to be constrained to both the boundaries of MMC as well as LMC? It seems that if a high level of precision is required, one may not want the form of the part to cross either of these boundaries. Uh, I'm going to challenge that a little bit here and we'll take a look at a couple examples to see if we truly do care about both boundaries. So first off, what this is referring to is rule number one. And rule number one states that the surface of any regular feature of size cannot extend beyond the envelope of perfect form at MMC. So we see here two examples that are demonstrating two features of size, one in internal, one external. Uh, for internal features of size, our maximum material condition, or the state at which the most amount of material exists, is when this diameter shrinks. So the smallest diameter is going to be our MMC size, and the largest diameter is going to be our LMC size. And then the opposite is true for the external feature. If we grow in diameter, we're adding material, so our MMC is going to be the largest diameter, and our LMC is going to be the smallest diameter. So what this means is if we picture this square block with a hole in it, and now we have our hole that maybe has a little bit of form air. If there's form air to that hole, it cannot extend into this envelope of perfect form. So our envelope is a perfect cylinder and its size is MMC 1.247. So if the cross sections of this or the local sizes, if you will, measure at 1.253 or the LMC, we can have up to six thousandths of form air uh, and still have a passing part as per rule number one. So we've restricted the amount of form air up to a perfect envelope of MMC. Uh, it does not restrict that form air up to an envelope at LMC. So if our envelope here was LMC, this value, we obviously see that the envelope created by LMC would be broken if this whole diameter was measured at LMC all the way down. So it's not restricting it to an envelope of LMC and that's for a good reason. Um, we'll show kind of why we care about uh, controlling form to an envelope of MMC. If we picture this part being assembled, right? Uh, if we're trying to manufacture the mating part or the mating feature, uh, there's a pin that comes through here. Well, if we measure that pin uh, and it comes in large, right? We would want to make sure that the largest pin that goes in this hole is not any bigger than the smallest hole allowed. And so the smallest hole allowed is our MMC, uh, 1.247. And if the largest pin be by design is 1.247, uh, and one of them has form air, it won't assemble. So that's why we restrict allowing any form to pass inside that envelope at MMC because we're assuming the other side of this equation, the other part that's assembling in here, is also going to do the same. So if they both measure at MMC, they both make sure to ha better make sure to have zero form air if they want to assemble appropriately. Uh, if we didn't have this rule, we would say that this could measure diametrically at MMC and have all sorts of wonky form air, um, but that would never assemble, right? So we, we control it to an envelope for assembly reasons. We control it to that MMC envelope for assembly reasons. Now, if we want to try and control it to LMC, the only reason you would want to do something like that or, or worry about the LMC is, is likely because of wall thickness. If this hole got too big in diameter, you're losing material here, right? It's the least material. But we'll always be able to calculate how much wall material or how much slop we would have uh, adjacent to the next mating part because we already know what that LMC limit is. If this cross section is at LMC and it deviates in position as much as it can this way, we can always calculate that. We can always restrict that by limiting just the LMC limit, uh, not having to limit the envelope. So let's take a look at the uh, external feature and see how this helps us in assembly situations as well. This external feature says our MMC is 1.515 and our LMC is 1.485. 
So if we picture the outside diameter having a little bit of bow to it, uh, we would say that the envelope restricts the amount of form air that's gonna happen up to 1.515. So if this diametrically measures at LMC, 1.485, right? It can't be any smaller than that anywhere on this part, otherwise it's gonna fail just the size check, uh, the local size checks. So if that's the case, we could have a maximum of 30 thousandths form air here. Now, if this is going to assemble inside something, which is likely what's going to happen, uh, we're worried about the size and form stacking up to interfere with whatever it's gonna assemble inside of. Let's say this goes inside a bearing. Uh, if the form and size of this part stack up to larger than what the smallest inside diameter of our mating part is, uh, then we're going to have assembly issues. So that's why we restrict it. We know the envelope, it'll never deviate outside this envelope. So we can design this part in accordance to that as well. And we can make sure that this part doesn't deviate inside this envelope. So there will never be interference. Now you can certainly design interference fit into it. I know there's definitely situations out there where we do press fit or um, heat shrink sort of situations where you do want some interference at the end of the day. Um, you can certainly work that into the equation as well. It's just the same. Um, but we definitely don't really care about deviating beyond the envelope of LMC in this situation either, because we already know the limit of LMC here and how much slop might occur if there's form air or how much or how thin this diameter might get anywhere along these lines based off the LMC limit. So we don't really care how thin this might get because we already know what that's going to happen. We don't need to hold it to an envelope. So hopefully this clarifies things for you. Um, again, rule number one will only control perfect form at MMC. Um, now I should point out here, uh, that there is a unique scenario in the standard that says you will hold perfect form to an envelope of LMC. And that is only when we are controlling, let's say instead of this, we have diameter 0 0.012 LMC with respect to A. Now, what this is saying is when we check this size, we are holding perfect form at LMC. Uh, and if anyone's familiar with our LMC lesson, you know that you really only use the LMC modifier when we are restricting minimum wall thicknesses and nothing is assembling through that hole or around that shaft, right? Uh, we're only controlling minimum wall thicknesses uh, with this LMC modifier. When you see this LMC modifier on a size dimension like this, uh, the rule number one does flip and it says uh, perfect form at LMC. So keep that in mind if you do see that out there, you will be controlling it to LMC, but in this scenario, you will not also be controlling it to MMC. It will do just to the LMC boundary. Again, hopefully this helps clarify it for everybody. Uh, thank you for the question, and we'll see you in the next video. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by training experts.